Good afternoon, uh, everyone. Uh, it's, it, my hey, name is Chen Shen Li. This is Ren Reddy, uh, founder and CEO of Quantify. It is really my great pleasure and honor to have the chance to interview Surendra. I had a brief chat with him uh, right before this session. I cannot believe how many brilliant ideas he had. He started many companies. He also had a chance to work uh, in a number of uh, large corporations. So I'd like to maybe ask uh, my first question. Do you want to share a little bit of thought in terms of the journey you have taken for the past many decades and uh, share your thoughts with all the uh, aspired uh, innovators and the startup uh, CEOs and co-founders? Oh, great. It may take a book to write because I worked 10 years for Larry Ellison. You can imagine. So I did a first startup actually challenging Ellison about building an AI agent back in 2003 to replace the trading desk agents in Wall Street. Can we really put a smart system in the database that can recommend the traders what stock to invest, what not to invest, basically doing the whole Monte Carlo simulations. That's what we call it machine learning today. And that's my first startup back in 2003. And then thanks to IBM, they came and killed me because what is the autonomous computing? Okay, IBM can solve world hunger, then startups cannot survive. So we ran the company for five years. And, they, and then the story goes on. Like I did many ventures like this, many AI ventures back from 2003. I did one more in 2008, building a supply chain, a purchase, uh, the, basically the guy who does the procurement. We replaced the procurement agent with a system that can actually do the procurement. The very large trading house in Japan actually deployed our system to do the complete trading automatically. You place a such supply order, takes the system, do the bill of material, procure the optimal stuff from different uh, suppliers, and distribute it by producing the logistic plan. And then off late, actually, I went to Yahoo to run Yahoo Cloud along with Carol Barch for two years to transform Yahoo. Unfortunately, that didn't go anywhere. I can't build an AI to run Yahoo. So then I went to uh, next door, that's a Xerox Park. I was CTO there running their big data machine learning and AI research. The Quantify is a spin-off from Xerox Park. So we started working on building a, a Uber AI platform, not to replace Uber, but as a generic UI, AI platform. And three years, we worked so hard to build a really sophisticated AI platform. And you can imagine, I would advise never ever build AI platforms, build a vertical focused application to solve a problem. It took three years for us to realize and last year, actually, we built an agent called Kira, which is completely powered with AI, to replace lawyers in banks to deal with anti-money laundering problem. Very sophisticated, $1.6 trillion problem. Banks pay billions of dollars in fines. And we are actually, this year, in two months, we picked up 14 banks as our customers. The hardest problem, $1.6 trillion. The last 10 years, banks spent $150 billion in fines and mostly solved by the people. The Citibank employs 32,000 people to look into transactions and file complaints with the government. So we replace those lawyers with the system that can do a better job than them. Wow, so I understand actually the whole governance recent compliance market is certainly uh, is enjoying a solid growth during the past uh, many years. And uh, uh, the, uh, the banking industry alone probably uh, um, uh, spend on the average somewhere between three to four hundred billion dollars a year in the recent compliance area, and uh, bank uh, major banks usually uh, have anywhere between ten to fifteen percent of the workforce uh, 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 working mostly high pay lawyers and uh, and the uh, CPAs and so on working in this area. So, do you have a broader point of view in terms of how you see that? the AI and the FinTech capability can be applied in this space. There's huge opportunities. If you imagine in 2018, the Europe is implementing a new standard called PSD2. That's basically Payment Service Directive number two. What it means is every bank should open their system through APIs. Imagine that how many hackers can get into the bank system, like what happened in Bangladesh. You can actually manipulate your swift messages to transfer billions of dollars from different systems, which means that Humans cannot really solve this problem. You need really sophisticated system to watch these transactions, control them, and guard them. 
I see huge opportunities, a trillion dollar opportunity, even if you look at a few banks in the United States, like a BN, you know, the uh, BNY Mellon, $1.6 trillion they transact through, the, through their system. How many humans they should employ? 18,000 people watch every transaction go through the BNY Mellon system to see whether it's a fraudulent or not. Imagine JP Morgan Chase employed 37,000 lawyers to look into each of these transactions. So what we are replacing is not all of your jobs, but replacing very highly paid, you know, next to the data scientist is called AML investigator, helping them to do good things in the society by tackling the money laundering problem. That's the biggest problem today. Money laundering is drug trafficking. You know, think of anything like only 2%, according to the United Nations report, only 2% is ever tracked. If $1.6 trillion is laundered, only 2% tracked, what is our technologies doing? Can we do a better job using machine learning and AI to tackle that problem? Huge opportunity. So given a little bit of my own history, I cannot help but have to ask, um, when do you think the AI will be able to power a system to pass the bar exam? Well, yeah, that's a great question, actually. We built our, our agent is called Kira. We were thinking about how Kira should get a social security number so that we can pay unemployment tax. Whoever loses the job because of our Kira, they get unemployment benefit. So soon our Kira will pass bad exam in you know, maybe a few years. So then we lose so many people in the top 1% paying tax, and then uh, the current administration will have a difficulty to fund the, the budget. Right? Our Kira will pay for the taxes. <laughs> So, so a lot of uh, discussion on the recent compliance certainly has the word risk. So how do you see the risk uh, play a role in this whole uh, environment? You know, I can give an example. We're talking to, we talk to all chief AML officers as our customers. In one of the conversations, they said, don't talk about compliance, don't talk about regulation. It's a big onion. No one is willing to open that onion. Once you peel the onion, everything is a non-compliance. You can't comply with every regulation. Think of any regulations coming in. It's so many of them. It's impossible for any bank to comply with those regulations. What they use is they use a risk-based approach. If I don't follow this, what happened? What is the cost of my penalty? Is it $10 million? Okay, I would take $10 million and pay $10 million. Think of what happened. Wells Fargo paid $185 million fine for opening and closing accounts. So is it a risky thing for them? They thought there's much better value for them to commit that non-compliance and pay $185 million. Citibank paid so far $38 billion in the last 10 years. Why they paid so much money? Because it's difficult for them to fix problems rather than paying fines. So with AI, it makes all our lives better. We will be compliant with a lot of things. All the money get wasted, save so many people. You know, your pension funds, your retirement plan, all can be protected by Kira so securely. You can trust Kira because she never sleeps. She never get bribed, no lobbying for Kira. <laughs> She's a very honest woman to take care of things for banks to solve the problems. That's kind of things you know, I see for the AI. Not only for Kira, you know, Kindi is another great example. We talk to government agencies too. The risk all, all over the place. You know, your communications is a risk. Your, your transactions you do online is a risk. How do we solve these problems? We need more of these agents to solve these problems. So uh, then in your vision, how uh, this industry is going to evolve and play out with the influence of AI in the coming years. It's going to be a beautiful world, right? You, know, you don't need to dip in. You know, if you go to the neurologist for a, you know, brain surgery or spine surgery, what are the guarantee that you know, they will do accurate surgery for you? I see in the next 10 years, you get a better treatment on healthcare-wise. You get taken care better in the society for your financial instruments. Your real estate agents finding the right house for you. Your travel agent finding the right booking for you. All these things will be done on your palm with some invisible agent sitting next to you helping you. It may not displace all our work. For every work, I believe still, there's 20% of the human intelligence is needed. So in Quantiply, we, we believe that augmenting these machines with the human intelligence make your system more sophisticated. We haven't reached to the pinnacle of getting the completely unsupervised machine learning algorithms yet. We still need some learning. For example, we work with the AI pioneer, Jeff Hawkins. He has a company called Numenta. So we took his algorithms called cortical learning. So we basically used that to decode all the bank secrecy act into very sophisticated uh, 
comparative documents in semantic language so that we can actually find any law that changes today. We can apply it on transactions to detect any fraud. Very good. So um, as we pr approach uh, the end of this uh, very brief fireside chat, if you want all the audience to walk away with three key lessons learned from your long journey for starting companies and working in the AI in banking industry, what are the three things you want them to Never work away ever with? build a platform. Never ever build a platform. Don't try to say, I'm going to build a machine learning platform, a AI platform. Never ever do that. Take one problem, do a very good job in doing that. Number two, you, cannot, you never win the game of changing the work process. If you go to the bank, tell the investigator, you're going to change the process because I'm introducing the new agent. You will never win that game. Augment their life with your tool. Make their life much better by augmenting it. It makes their life much easier. Then you become friend to them instead of a foe to them. They will promote you. And third thing is don't take VC money on the day one. So we built Quantiply with the zero money. Last year we booked $1 million revenue with no outside money. Thanks to SAP, thanks to Cisco gave me $3 million worth of hardware to test my algorithms. So all in-kind money, no VC money. This year, we're actually going to meet $5 million mark. So we have 14 banks in our pipeline. So focus on customers. That's the most important thing. Don't focus on raising the money. Focus on getting your customers. Understand the problem you could solve. You could solve extremely well. Nobody can come close to you. So don't waste your time, you know, just PowerPoint presentations. Get to the code. Write algorithms, create your differentiation. So don't invent everything by yourself. There are a lot of smart people than you. Look at them, partner with them, bring the technologies together. Wow. So, well, I think I'd like to, uh, on behalf of the audience, really thank our distinguished uh, guest, Surendra. Thank you so much. And also thank you so much. Watson, by the thank way. Thank you.